The following interview was conducted with Robert M. Claflin, Professor Emeritus of Veterinary Pathobiology and Associate Dean Emeritus of the School of Veterinary Medicine at Purdue for the Purdue Oral University Oral History Program. It took place on Monday, August the 10th, 2009 at Stewart Center. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Library. Welcome, Dr. Claflin, and good afternoon to you. Tell us a little bit about where you were born, your parents and siblings in early years. Um, born in Flint, Michigan, in um, November of 1921, and um, uh, I was the oldest of two sons. What all, what all do you want to know? About? Um, what, what about grade school and high school, and uh, what what your um, what uh, a little bit about that okay. about growing up? I went to. Um, Grade school first in the city of Flint, the um, Grant Grade School, and uh, then we moved to the country, and I spent um, three years in a one-room country school, uh, and then um, went through uh, four years of high school in Montrose, Michigan. Okay, tell us a little bit about high school. Any student activities and uh, teachers, etc. Uh, and how large a school was it? It was a very small school. Okay. Uh, I think we had 17 in our graduating class. I, I think that's about right. Okay. And um, what sort of program did you take while you were in high school? Any uh, uh, college prep or? There weren't, uh, uh, there weren't different kinds of programs. Everybody took the, uh, the same thing. Okay. Pretty much. Alrighty. And, um, and everybody participated in most of the activities because we were small. That's right. Interesting, isn't it? And you also went to a small grade, uh, grade school. <laughs> well, the grade school wasn't... Not that... The, the one grade school, the one... The, uh, the, the one, one country school sure. was. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, right. That's kind of a nice remembrance to have <laughs> as uh, you look I, back. Yeah. Uh, if I'd been born a little bit later... I'd, I probably wouldn't have had that experience. That's right, exactly. <laughs> oh, and then, then after high school, what came next? Would you go to... Uh, after high school, um, well, uh, and, and it, uh, a significant event happened. My, my father died. All right. Uh, when um, I became, he died in the middle of the summer, and in November I became 15 years old. My goodness. Oh, dear. And... Um, uh, my mother, my brother, and I, and oh, oh, I should say, uh, my, my dad worked in um, uh, the purchasing department of uh, Buick uh, Motor Company. Okay. Uh, and But we moved to a farm, and uh, he continued to work for Buick, but uh, uh, we gradually acquired some equipment and some livestock, and so we were partly farming when when my dad died. Okay. So um, I took over the farm mm -hmm. at, at 15 years of age. My goodness. And um, quite a challenge. It was, and it was quite an opportunity too. Oh yes. But it allowed me to do things that nobody told me I couldn't do. All right. Try and see how you go. Yep. And so that was that was a, a, a mixed. Uh, event. Mm -hmm. um, I farmed for a few years uh, with my brother. My mother was a housekeeper, but she didn't milk cows or drive tractors or uh, do anything like that. Sure. So my, my brother and I did that. My brother was uh, two years younger than I. Okay. And um, then the war happened and um, there was a, um, a formula created to uh, uh, determine agricultural uh, exemptions from the draft. And um, my brother and I didn't have quite two full ones. So uh, he, went in the, he went in the Navy uh, and um, I tried farming alone for maybe a couple of years and then we had a big 
auction sale and sold all the, the livestock and equipment and, and uh, I made myself available for the draft and I was drafted and I had an opportunity to choose so I chose the Navy. Okay. So uh, I spent uh, that time in the Navy and... Um, now what year would that have been? When did you g go in? Oh, let's see. I don't know. It's okay. Or sometime in the 40s, I mentioned. Yeah. The war had already started, though. Oh, yeah. Okay. The war, right. was, uh, uh, the war was winding down. Oh, so it probably might have been 1945. Yeah, it could have been. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Did you serve only in uh, in the United States? Yes. I All did. right. Okay. Uh, I had uh, I wore glasses and they didn't want to be bothered with that overseas. So okay. <laughs> they wouldn't let me out of that. <laughs> okay. You weren't in. Uh, did you? Um, were you at one of the bases there in, in the states? Where Where did you serve? Yeah. Uh, well, I, I was um, inducted in Chicago and sent to Great Lakes. Naval Training Station. Okay. And then to San Diego, and a very strange thing happened. Um, my brother, who had been in the service a couple of years or so more than I, uh, he and I were um, discharged at the same day. Oh my goodness! And uh, it, uh, the discharge center was in Chicago, and. Uh, he came to that place from Hawaii, and I came from, where was I at that time? Fort Eustis, Virginia. Okay. And uh, uh, I had been uh, on the base for a while so that I was able to have a car, and um, we drove home together. Oh, how nice. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Well, then what came next after he got out of the service? Um... Um, not much. Uh, okay. Uh, 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 I worked for a while as a carpenter's helper, and my brother did something like that, and oh. then uh, we were faced with the GI Bill, uh -huh. and um, I urged my brother to, to take advantage of that and, and go to college. and. Um, he said he would if I would, so we both did, and uh, we uh, we went to Michigan State. Uh, he went in agriculture, and I w I became a, a pre vet, and eventually uh, w was uh, admitted to the veterinary college at Michigan State University. All right. Did you live on campus while you were there? Yes, I did. Okay. Uh, what well, what happened there? Um, was that um, they offered my brother and I both uh, a cot. Well, first a cot in the women's gym. <laughs> you know, there were, things were crowded. Oh, yeah, after the war. I understand that. And, um, and then um, uh, a, a Quonset hut with uh, bunks mm -hmm. and then a, a semblance of a desk somewhere and um, we looked at that and said we can't do that so we bought a house trailer huh. and moved it into a backyard in um, East Lansing okay and both of us stayed there um, I, I was there uh, longer than, than my brother because uh, he did a four-year and uh, at that time the veterinary program was um, five years. Okay. So um, after after he left, um, uh, I hooked up with some other veterinary students, and we uh, acquired an, a, an apartment mm -hmm. uh, for that last year. Okay. What'd you do with the What'd you do with the trailer? Uh, we sold it. Oh, okay. But oh, good. We, um, after a while, uh, one summer, I moved the trailer with a, uh, another veterinary student up into northern Michigan, and for the summer, um, 
we tested cattle for brucellosis and tuberculosis. Oh, very good. And then when, when we finished that, brought the trailer home, we, we sold it. Oh, okay. All right. Well, it gave you wheels to get up there. <laughs> it gave you wheels to get up there, the trailer. Yeah. It did. Right. Okay. So that was that brings us up to graduation. All right. And then what came next after that? After you got your DVM degree? Uh, Purdue. All right. Uh, Tell us what, what happened is that um, um, a, a uh, Pied Piper from Purdue named uh, Leslie Morton Hutchings came to Michigan State and um, talked three of us into coming to Purdue okay. as graduate students. All right, good. In, in 1952. Okay, all right. Well, tell us a little about your early early days here. And, of course, at that time was still the Department of Veterinary Science, am I correct? That's right. Okay. It was. And um, our title was graduate instructor. All right. And um, Were it only graduate students you were teaching then? No. Oh, undergrads. Well, well, we didn't do an awful lot of teaching, but we did teach some required courses to students in agriculture. Okay. Uh, animal husbandry type of courses. Okay. Uh, but mostly we did research. All right. What sort and, of... Uh, oh, we, Purdue at that point operated the, the State Animal Disease Diagnostic Laboratory, and uh, so we all got section, uh, assignments in that laboratory and, and, and did our research f toward our uh, thesis. Okay. What sort of research, what were you working on? Can you tell us what the type of research you were involved in? Uh, my research involved uh, respiratory conditions of swine. Okay. So. okay. Then, and you got your master, you went ahead and got your master's, is that correct? From Purdue? Yeah. Okay. A master's and a PhD. Okay, all right. Um, and then by that, during that time, wasn't that the time when, about those times when they were thinking about getting the school opened and getting it up and running? Oh, yeah. And the funding? Okay. Yep. Uh, uh, Dr. Hutchings uh, spearheaded that uh, together with some uh, members of the School of Agriculture. And, um, well, we, we were all more or less involved in it. Sure, okay, uh, okay. In, in, in getting that to happen. Right. Um, and um, when it did, um, uh, you, you have to understand that Pat Hutchings uh, was a, a, a exceedingly charismatic individual. Okay. And I think... Uh, the president of Purdue University at that time was um, um, Ben Fred Hovde. Hovde, yeah, and uh, I think Hovde would would have would have adopted Hutchings if he could. <laughs> okay. They were they were very close. Okay. And um, so once the school was established, then um, it was necessary to um, recruit. A faculty uh, develop uh, the curriculum. Um, all kinds of things happen. Bing, bing. Sure, and ex and get accept applications. Get the students up and running. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, the f first year of that up and running business, uh, Pat Hutchings and I, I became chairman of the admissions committee. Okay. I held uh, for, I don't know, 20 years or so uh, after that. But um, uh, Pat and I, and maybe one or two others, I don't recall them, uh, we sorted through the applicants and picked the first class to join the, the veterinary school at Purdue. Very good. In the spring. Uh, we picked the class, and then um, I am, am, uh, trying to remember when I got a faculty appointment. Um, I, 
I, I think I, 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 uh, when I got my PhD, um, I stayed on at Purdue and became an, uh, an assistant professor. Okay. Briefly. And, um, and then um, um, Pat Hutchings um, uh, arranged for me to be uh, chairman of this, which, which was in those days a huge department. It was called the Department of Veterinary Microbiology, Pathology, and Public Health. Oh, my goodness. That's a, long, that's a mouthful. Long name, right. Yeah, and um, so um, uh, being head of that size of department and everything, uh, Hutching said, uh, you, you can't be uh, an assistant professor. So with his pull with the president and a few other happenstances. Um, I skipped the associate professorship and and became a professor. Well, uh, immediately. Mm. And that's a coup that doesn't occur today. I bet not. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you made the big leap. I made the big leap from assistant to full. Very good. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, and I took a sabbatical. Oh, okay. Um, and where'd you go? I went to the Armed Forces Institute of Pathology in uh, Bethesda, Maryland. Okay. And um, while I, I, I took off for that, uh, and um, Hutch went in the hospital in Chicago, and um, uh, I was mm, maybe five months or something like that in my sabbatical uh, when I keep, uh, th this man's name was Leslie Morton Hutchings. He was a New Englander, and uh, but everybody called him either Pat or Hutch. Okay. So um, Hutch died in that hospital while I was on sabbatical. So um, I came home for the funeral and, and stuff like that. I had, a, I, had a, I had a young daughter and and a wife and and we had a home in. Um, the District of Columbia um, Springs. Uh -huh. Something Springs. What the heck was that? I haven't thought of that for a long time. Okay. Anyway, um, I came home for the funeral and then uh, finished up that sabbatical and came back to Purdue and um, took over running that department. What, the uh, comparative pathobiology? Well, no, at that oh, stage it was called Microbiology, Pathology, and Public Health. Okay, all right. Which got me onto a lot of uh, activities that were almost beyond my comprehension. And the public health thing, um, various public health agencies around the country thought I knew something about public health. Um, so I, I got jobs well, doing that, that kind of stuff. Uh, sure, okay. Um, do you have to get some uh, faculty? Were you involved in recruitment of faculty as well? Uh, we were to recruit faculty. Okay. Um, and and develop a curriculum. Um, just as just as rapidly as we could. Sure. Okay. Um, Those were heady times. I imagine. Uh, and then Dr. Mor Erskine Morris became the next dean. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Where were you located uh, on the in, uh, in Lynn Hall? No. Uh, oh. Lynn Hall didn't exist. Okay. Um, they, that dedication, I think, was 1960, if I'm not mistaken. That's for probably the, right. Right. Okay. Uh, I occupied the uh, the old veterinary science building. Oh. Okay. And I had a lovely office in a corner of that building and uh, and we, we housed our the faculty in it as we were able to recruit them mm -hmm. I mean we had to we had to recruit uh, bacteriologists virologists pathologists um, that was that was the most of the people that we recruited okay all right uh, and um, housed them in that building until Lynn Hall was completed, and, um, and we could spread out. And okay. I, I remained in, in the old vet path building, uh, I 
I think, un until I became associate dean. All right, okay. When did you become the, um, the head of that comparative pathobiology? Were you the head uh, there, that department? Uh, yeah. Hmm? Okay. Um, but uh, but uh, oh, they must have changed the name then, perhaps. Changed the name. Okay, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Thank and you. Uh, that clerk. Okay. Uh, they dropped yeah. the public health, is that one of those, they dropped that they out dropped of, that. okay. And, um, um, well, we, we became a department of, of virology and bacteriology. I had to hire, find and hire a bacteriologist, a virologist, uh, a parasitologist, um, all kinds of people like that. Wow. Yeah. And in the meantime, were you still on the uh, admissions committee during all this? I was. Uh -huh. Okay. Oh, boy. Yeah. You got a lot of hats that you were wearing. That's indeed right. <laughs> okay. Uh, what about the enrollment as far as student, uh, your students? And were you doing had graduate students as well in the department? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, we, we were um, uh, authorized to offer... Um, Masters and PhD programs in um, bacteriology, virology, and especially pathology, um, parasitology as well. Um, so, so we did it. Mm -hmm. And you got students, I see. Okay, all right. We got grad students. Sure. In in those programs, and and of course we had the veterinary students. That's right. Okay. What about uh, uh, what was the uh, scene at that time as far as funding was concerned, say for grants and the external funding, government grants? Uh -huh. Well, um, what was the climate about? We well, began with um, um, the, uh, grants from the D Department of Agriculture. Okay. And uh, but then we we gradually uh, acquired. Um, uh, NIH grants and um, um, industrial grants. We we were very close with um, the um, um, Eli Lilly. Okay. And uh, it, it turned out that um, Indiana uh, was a, a kind of a hotbed of. Um, Pharmaceutical research, and uh, Eli Lilly was there, and um, wasn't Mead Johnson? Uh, yeah, a drug company. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, uh, a whole bunch of them. We went over in in um, on the east side of the state. Okay. West side of the state, I mean. All right. And, um, I had a whole bunch of stuff like okay. that. Okay. Good. All right. In fact, we. Uh, we had so much of that kind of thing going on that um, we organized the um, Midwest Society of Veterinary Pathology and joined with people from Michigan State and uh, Auburn and Ohio State and Illinois. And, um, it was quite an organization for quite a while. Yes, that's right. Um, were there any other committees in the school that you were on as well while you were the head, or did you chair any of the others? Oh, I'm sure I did. Okay. Probably, well, admissions was been a big one. Yeah. Uh, all right. The um, faculty recruitment at that time, did they have, uh, were they starting to use the search committees or, uh, you know, for when you're looking for new faculty? The, the school would establish a committee to search for candidates, search and screen, or not? No. No. Oh, okay. That seemed to be the job of the department heads. Okay. Okay. And we, you know, we, we, we as, as a whole school, we recruited a, um, a head of uh, anatomy. Okay. That was critical because that was the, the major subject of the first year of veterinary school. So. Um, and and we, we when we were still a um, veterinary science department, we had, we had a clinician who looked after the uh, health of the university herds and flocks. 
and um, then he he became a, a, a clinician, and uh, he was followed very shortly thereafter by uh, a, an academic clinician, uh, who then became head of the department of um, clinics. Oh, okay, all right. Um, so there, there was that, that whole uh, chain of events. events. Okay, sounds People. good. Okay. Do you want to talk now a little bit about when you became the associate dean? Um, and how that perhaps came about? Yeah, I, I can tell you uh, some of this is, is, is uh, anecdotal. Okay. And it, it should be recorded in some way that it was that. Okay. Uh, um, you say it as you see it. Okay. <laughs> um, we, we, um, we went through a series of deans. Uh, after uh, Erskine Morris, and then we had, I'm not sure I've got these in. Wasn't Jack Stockton next? Jack, Jack Stockton was probably next. Okay. And um, eventually um, we recruited um, from industry. Hugh Le was the next dean Hugh Lewis? Yeah. All right. And um, when we made the offer, oh, I, I had I had hired Hugh Lewis earlier on. Okay. Are you now the associate dean? Is that what you're at the role at this point? No. Oh, okay. Well, not not really. All right. Uh, Go ahead. I, 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 when I was head of the department, uh, I needed a clinical pathologist. And so... Um, uh, I hired um, um, Hugh Lewis as, as a clinical pathologist, and he served in in that capacity on our departmental faculty okay. for a few years. And then he he went to um, Smith Klein uh, Industry, and then we um, when we needed another dean, we thought of him and um, and recruited him. And um, I'm coming to the part where you ask uh, about how I, how I became that's okay uh, an um, associate dean. Well, um, Hugh Lewis said that he would come and be our dean uh, if if I would be his right hand man. So that's how I became okay. Yeah. So. Very nice compliment. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> Now tell us a little bit. About what were the nature of the responsibilities in that position? Well, at first they were they were totally general. Um, uh, they later became uh, an associate dean for research, and associate dean for. I was associate dean. I I was all things for a while. Okay. And then. Then we, we began to split it up, and um, there was uh, it split about three different ways. Okay. And um, what I I think I I became associate dean for academic affairs, I guess. Okay. So, all right. Like okay. And uh, I don't. Uh, Hugh Lewis wanted me on, on, on his team because uh, I supposedly knew where all the bodies were buried. <laughs> okay. And you'd been there for quite a while. I had been there for a lot so, of years. Yeah, a lot of tenure there. Yes. Mm. Did, uh, what were some of the things, that, some of the initiatives, were there any, or some challenges in this position that you uh, faced in the academic affairs? Um, well, uh, I continued as chairman of the admissions committee. Okay. Um, I don't know. I was awfully busy. <laughs> I'm sure you were. I'm sure you were. Did you have any interaction with the students? With students? Uh-huh. Okay. Um, 
course, through the admissions committee, sure, right, a lot of reaction, interaction that way, right. And did you also work with readmissions as well? If some, if somebody had wanted to be readmitted, or did that not uh, normally occur? No. Okay. Sometimes departments say they leave and then they want to get readmitted or they get dropped or something. Uh, okay. No, that didn't happen. All right. Uh, did, not, did, there, not right then. I sure. Think. Did you uh, ever serve with on the um, university senate at all? Yeah, I was a senator. Okay. <laughs> I was just about everything. It sounds like, <laughs> yes, I would say so. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Um, uh, I on the Senate. I was chairman of the nominating committee. Okay. And um, I'm sure there were other things. Sure, I that's right. This would have been um, the, now we move as far as president probably when, when Hanson, Dr. Hanson was president and Dr. Baring. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Incidentally, we were delighted with Dr. Baring because uh -huh. he understood what we were talking about. And the rest of them didn't, <laughs> because he was the dean of the, vet, of the medical school at uh, Indiana University. Right. Which brings a question I wanted to ask you. Um, were you, did you have any connection at all with the IU uh, um, facility that was here on campus? Oh, yeah. Oh, um, could you tell us, just make a couple comments on that? Well, that was one of the things that I had a lot to do with to begin with. Okay. Um, when it first got started? Yeah, you need to understand that... Um, Indiana had one medical school. That's correct. And um, there were various levels of movement to, to try to uh, develop another school, but they never could get the General Assembly uh, to approve a location. And so they came up with this thing called the Indiana uh, Statewide Medical Education System. The acronym for that is ISMAS, <laughs> and I thought probably that's what it was going to be, <laughs> but it didn't turn out that, that way quite so, but... Um, no, it didn't. We, we had, uh, we, we not only had uh, uh, several of the disciplines, for, uh, Purdue was one of the, one of the locations for this, for these students uh, in the uh, Indiana Medic, uh, Statewide Medical Education System. Uh, together with Ball State in Muncie and Notre Dame and um, uh, Evansville, and they were scattered around. And uh, at Purdue, uh, my department, I, I don't remember whether I was still a department head then, or I, I think I was, because we, we had, um, we offered um, pathology to those students. They weren't a lot of students. I think we had maybe like 15 mm -hmm. at the time or something like that. Okay. And, and um, um, uh, we, we parceled out uh, in, in some degree uh, those students. Um, they were they were they prominently uh, took um, courses in um, physiology and pharmacology that department that was a separate department that wasn't my department okay um, but we had the pathology but we even had the coroner mm. because we had uh, um, we uh, uh, we um, provided the morgue for it the was morgue. in that building am I correct in the basement yeah, in, in all that's correct yeah and so um, so we, we had uh, the coroner as well. Mm -hmm. All right. For the researchers, the, the classes were in the basement of Lynn Hall, the medical students. Is that correct? Is that where the classes were held? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. But um, let's. We had to recruit an um, MD pathologist. Oh, okay. To, to teach them uh, pathology, general pathology. Uh, was um, the same whether it was animals or people. Sure. But uh, once they got into um, more specific kinds of pathology, then um, then we had I had to recruit an M. 
MD pathologist. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think I did a, had to do two or three of them because they didn't stay all that long. And, um, but they, were, they had to teach these um, medical students who were doing their pre-clinical years at Purdue as well as at these other several stations around the state. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Uh, let me ask you a couple questions about the school. Um, th what about, uh, talk, can you make some comments on diversity within the school? Yeah. Um, it, it, diversity, I'll, I'll tackle it from two standpoints. Uh, one is gender and, and the other is race. Um, in the beginning, um, let's see, somewhere early on, we, we had two female veterinary students. Back when I was in charge of the, of the uh, admissions committee and, and all that kind of stuff, and um, um, that was not because of any particular prejudice on our part. Uh, women students were regularly um, uh, cautioned against uh, going to veterinary school. I found that out. And um, we, we would have been happy to have women veterinary students. We just couldn't get any. Sure. And the same thing happened with um, uh, race. Uh, in, um, veterinary medicine I'm, I'm really reaching right now, and, and I hope you were able to co cover this up some way. But um, uh, black African American students were not much interested in veterinary medicine, and um, I reached a, a conclusion that uh, that sounded like agriculture, and agriculture sounded like picking and cotton. <laughs> and they had no, no great desire to get into veterinary yeah. school for a while. And that, uh, of course, changed, and we eventually sure. were able to recruit sure. um, black veterinary students. Right, yeah. What about um, fundraising development in the school? That certainly has changed over campus-wide, has it not? Mm, yeah. Okay. Um, They have more more active uh, programs, quite active with it, within the university. Uh, um, the enrollment uh, pretty much has increased. Or comment on that during your time there. The students. Yeah, I hear you. Okay. Um, the the general assembly. Uh, through, through some offices, um, dictated the total number of veterinary students that we could accept. accept. And um, that was uh, based on um, what kind and how much of um, uh, clinical experience we could provide veterinary students. So we started with, um, I think was, we were around 70 students or something like that. And um, in that state, uh, we were not allowed by, I, I, I understood it by the General Assembly to exceed that for a few years. And, and then it gradually increased. Okay. As our ability to provide um, cases, um, animals, sure. patients. Oh for the latter uh, two years of the uh, veterinary curriculum. Okay, all right. Okay. Um, were you ever, a um, couple more questions, were you ever a fact fellow at any of the residence halls while you were here? Faculty fellow program? You recall that? Was I ever what? A faculty fellow? No. Oh, okay, not. all right, okay. Um, then, of course, the school had two big anniversaries, the 25th, and, of course, this year is the 50th. Mm -hmm. And you're here for both of them. 
you got to hang in there for the 75th. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll try to be there, both of us. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, any, uh, well, any awards or honors that you care to comment on that you received? I'll go look in my office. I've got plaques hanging around in there. I'll, I'll turn it off for a second till you come back. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll just care. I'll have a walk around phone. All right. Okay. Go a cordless ahead. phone. All right. Well, I'm looking at uh, when uh, my wife and I were made members of the President's Council. Okay. I'm looking at the Alumni Faculty Award for Excellence. Um, the, um, what's this one? Hmm. I forgot to tell you about the Veterinary Commons. <laughs> That was something else, too. Well, tell us about it. Hmm? What was it? What were you going to say? You forgot what you're going to tell us about? Uh, I just picked up a um, plaque here. Okay. okay. Uh, that um, was um, for dedicating the uh, Claflin Commons, which was a, a uh, public place for produce uh, vet veterinary medicine people to meet and relax in surroundings for free discourse uh, and a whole bunch of other nice words. Congratulations, that's very nice. That was when uh, Hugh Lewis was here. Okay. Uh, naming a place for that to happen um, as a commons uh, that hit him where he lived. So he, he liked that notion. Okay. And how this was it. Ah. What about um, any pro uh, professional associations? You belong to the Indiana Veterinary Medical Association? Yes, I did. Okay. And the American one as well? Yes. Uh -huh. Were there any others that, uh, and did you hold any offices in any of those? No. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about family. Um, do you have children? Yes. Uh, did they go to Purdue? No. Okay. All right. They, <laughs> that wasn't going away to college. Big pardon? That was not like going away to college. I see. Okay. <laughs> where, where did they... One of them went to Purdue. Okay. <laughs> I, had, I had three children. All right. Um, a son and two daughters. And um, they... They went various places. All right. Where'd you meet your wife? Uh, when you were at Purdue? Yes, at Purdue. Okay. Um, I remember that very vividly. Um, we, we had technicians in, in our um, research laboratories. Uh huh. And um, the, the lady that was um, our technician uh, in, in our research lab. Um, she left. How did she leave? She didn't die. But we had one. The, the next one that came uh, did die. I mean, she committed suicide. Oops. Out on the banks of the Wabash River. Oh, dear. Yeah. Hmm. And, um, but, um, the one that came after that uh, became my wife, and uh, she walked in the door, and I was smitten. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Do you have any grandchildren? Yeah. Okay. Six grandchildren, um, two granddaughters uh, who are within a couple of years of each other and are, in, uh, are 12 and 14, and um, four grandsons. Oh, very nice. Good, good combination there. <laughs> Let's talk. What about uh, talk about what you're doing in retirement? What are your retirement activities? You move back to Michigan, I gather. I uh, yeah, I live in Michigan. Sure. Um, I have a. Um, uh, I live in the oldest house in Ludington. Okay. And it's big, and and it takes a lot of care, 
and um, and it has a, a lot of uh, grounds, and um, it it, uh, it sits on on Lake Michigan. Hmm. Our our yard runs down to to Lake to Michigan. Oh, how nice! Yeah. So um, I do a lot of yard work, and I do a lot of maintenance, <laughs> and. Um, that that keeps me pretty high. I would say, so. pardon me. I would say so. <laughs> uh, um, when uh, first of all, if you live in the oldest house in town, uh, you get uh, immediate um, you're, you're immediately known. Okay. And um, you get requests for tours. Oh yeah, I've, I've, we've done tours. Okay. <laughs> various kinds of fundraisers. Sure. Um, but, um, one of our neighbors, when we were when we were first in this house, uh, invited us to dinner, and um, one of the other guests um, was uh, a Rotarian, and he said. Um, I think you ought to consider joining Rotary, and I did. And the combination of uh, living in this house and Rotary uh, garnered us, um, I, I, the, one, the one word I can think of is the wrong one, and that's notoriety. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we became very well known very, very quickly with, with those kinds of Very things. nice, yeah. So, uh, got I'm, a still, I'm very active in Rotary. Good, good. Um, let me ask you this. Do you have a um, Purdue tradition that uh, you'd like to make a comment on, me mention the Purdue tradition? Purdue tradition? Mm-hmm. Anyone that comes to mind? Uh, I don't think I follow you. Uh, traditions such as, you know, well, you sort of remember homecoming or commencement or sometimes the Boilermaker special or per or Purdue Pete. You saw all those things, though, right? You remember the homecoming when they used to have a lot of the parades. Oh, yeah. uh, sure. Our, yeah. our home in West Lafayette. Um, my wife and and my son uh, created a Purdue Pete and a small football stadium and goalposts in our front yard. Oh, super! For homecoming. Oh, how great! That's a great tradition. <laughs> Oh, what about an outstanding event? Does one come to mind? An outstanding event? Mm-hmm. Or you can have more than one if you'd like to share. Uh, they, they all just kind of flow together. Great, okay. You know, when, uh, when you're here at the beginning of the school, uh, then each event after that just kind of happens. Very, nicely said. Very nice. I'm going to leave the let to leave you some with some closing remarks. Anything you'd like to say? As you look and or so, I'll leave it to you. Well, um, I, I spent so many years at Purdue and, and gave so much of my life to them that. Um, they're, uh, they're, they're my alma mater, even though I graduated from Michigan State. Okay. Um, I, I'm afraid I don't give Michigan State <laughs> quite the attention that it deserves. Because That's uh, my first, uh, first thoughts and efforts are always sure. to Purdue. Go Boilers. Yep, go right. Boilers. Okay. Dr. Claflin, I want to thank you very much. This has been, I hope I get a chance to meet you sometime. If you get on campus, you be sure to give me a call. Okay. okay, and I did send you that one form, and I have one other that for the, we'll be turning the tape over to the archives, but I'll send that to you with my letter of acknowledgement, okay? Okay. And uh, I, I want to thank you again, and you have a great weekend. Thank you very you're, much. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, <laughs>